Imagine a cat so small, so discreet, it could fit in the palm of your hand. The world's smallest cat, living in dense forests where every shadow might hide deadly danger. How does such a tiny creature survive in such a brutal world? Stay with us to discover the incredible and often difficult story of the rusty spotted cat. A life spent mastering the art of not being seen, until that's no longer enough. This dense forest could be here, here, or even there, somewhere in India or Sri Lanka. This is where your mother lives, a magnificent rusty spotted cat. She chose this small rock crevice, just big enough for her, but too small for the predators that would want to eat you. A smart choice, especially when you're about to give birth to two completely useless creatures. That's you blind deaf, barely measuring 12 centimeters. Congratulations, you're officially the smallest feline in the world. What a title! For the first week, the world is just a blur of darkness and warm mother's milk. But that's enough. Your mother has to go hunting now. You're alone for a few hours. Good luck with that. After 12 days of absolute darkness, your eyes finally open to the world you'll have to survive in. But the real danger begins when you reach your first month. It's time to leave the den and face the outside world. And that guy over there? That's your father. Well, that was your father. A stupid accident with an elephant. The wild world is merciless. Your first days outside are all about watching your mother, learning her hunting techniques, figuring out how to survive. Because, let's be honest, the brutal laws of this world are not in your favor. Luckily, your foot pads are soft and narrow, allowing you to move silently even across dry leaves. That's a good thing, because at your size, almost everything with a mouth is a potential predator. Oh, look, your sibling just got eaten by that fox. Congratulations, you no longer have to share your food. Wait, the fox is coming towards you now. When you feel threatened, you use three defense strategies developed over millions of years. First, the complete freeze. It's hard for predators to spot you when you're motionless. But sometimes it fails. That's when you move on to option two, sprinting at full speed. Your reaction is so fast that this fox probably thought you disappeared. Your muscles store energy like compressed springs and release it in bursts, propelling you from stillness to top speed in the blink of an eye. Oh, he's coming back. Okay, let's move on to option three, hiding in tiny spaces. You slip into crevices where the fox can't follow. This is where you truly appreciate the perks of being small in this hellish world. All this running has made you hungry. Your first hunting attempts target insects and small reptiles. You replay every move you saw your mother make, but while your brain knows what to do, your body is still learning the controls. It looks more like having a seizure near a butterfly. Don't cry. Your first attempts have a success rate close to zero anyway. That's why mom takes over and hands you a few pieces of her prey. Oh, look over there. A rare creature, seldom seen in these woods. A human, and he's crying profusely. When you reach six months old, you start getting a little aggressive toward other cats. It's not personal, it's instinct. Your kind prefers the solo life. So, you pack your tiny bags and leave your birthplace like a rebellious teenager to claim a new spot that suits your refined taste. You don't stray too far from mom's turf. You're still young and let's be honest, not exactly a streetwise warrior yet. So the best move, claim a small nearby spot you can actually defend without embarrassing yourself. You mark your territory with your urine that smells like buttered popcorn. Even predators think they're at the movies. You patrol your borders with all the seriousness of a tiny furry security guard, chasing off any other cat who dares to stop by. No visitors allowed. Gotta respect the confidence, even though you could fit in a human hand. Your daily routine is simple. Sleep all day in places nobody would think to look, then emerge at dusk to hunt. 
your bright green eyes, thanks to the Tapetum lucidum, give you night vision about six times more sensitive than a human's. Your ears can pick up the sound of a mouse breathing from 50 feet away. Not bad for something whose ears are the size of fingernails. There it is. You stalk your prey with the intensity of a serial killer, moving low to the ground, one paw at a time, your body so low you're practically doing a military crawl. Then you pounce. Your tiny jaws clamp down on a mouse twice the size of your head. You might be small, but your teeth are needle sharp and your bite force is surprisingly strong for a cat that weighs less than a bag of sugar. Dinner served. If you can manage to drag it back without tripping over it. Let's rewind a bit. Your ancestors belonged to the Prionaliurus lineage. While most cats were following the standard evolutionary playbook, get bigger, get stronger, get scarier, your branch of the family had different ideas. While the big cats were fighting over who gets to eat the deer, your ancestors were living in the ecological leftovers, the micro niches that nobody else could physically fit into. Your family's success wasn't about being fierce, it was about never being noticed in the first place. Your ancestors faced more evolutionary pressure from being hunted than from hunting. Those who made noise or took up too much space became someone else's lunch. What's left after millions of years of that kind of pressure is the feline version of minimalism. Stripped down, silent, optimized. Less muscle but more efficiency was your gene's strategy. A smaller body means lower caloric needs. A sustainable life in seasonal environments where food isn't always plentiful. You got better at climbing thin branches, leaping precisely, and navigating vegetation so dense it would give other cats claustrophobia. You're not a mini house cat gone wild. You're the product of a completely different evolutionary strategy. While your distant cousins were becoming lions and tigers, your ancestors took the opposite approach, shrinking vanishing into the underbrush. And somehow, that strategy worked. Well, kind of worked. Today, your entire species numbers fewer than 10,000 mature individuals. No known local population exceeds 1,000 adults, scattered across disjointed patches of forest. Your nature's silent guardian. Without you and your kind, rodent populations would explode unchecked destroying vegetation and spreading diseases. You even adapt to seasonal changes. During monsoon season, while other predators struggle with flooded hunting grounds, you've already relocated to higher, drier territory where prey, like flying termites emerging after heavy rain, is more concentrated. That's your aerial buffet. But after millions of years evolving to be discreet, something is changing. Your hunting grounds are changing. Strange scents fill the air, acrid and unnatural. The ground trembles with mechanical rhythms. It began with distant roars that scattered birds. Then humans arrived with devices that fell trees, sending thunderous crashes through your territory. Each day they push deeper. Initially, you adjusted, shifting routes, avoiding destruction zones, finding new hideouts. But the changes accelerate. The dense undergrowth that provided perfect hunting cover is gone. Your network of pathways leads nowhere, just bare earth and stumps where forests once stood. The food web unravels. You expend into unfamiliar areas, but competition is fierce as other creatures seek refuge from the same destruction. You're forced into marginal habitats, too exposed, too dangerous. Your hunts grow desperate and unsuccessful. Those muscles once primed for explosive speed waste away as meals become rare. One morning, massive machines approach. The ground vibrations rattle your bones. You flee, abandoning your last suitable habitat. You find yourself in alien terrain, fields where forests stood, then on the edge of a dark road at night. Blinding lights race along this black river. You bolt across. A split second. A violent impact. The driver doesn't stop. Doesn't even notice what they hit. Just another shadow. Too small to matter. 
Rain washes away blood traces, erasing evidence you ever existed. While machines continue consuming forests miles away, the IUCN lists your kind as near-threatened, but that term hardly captures reality. Your evolutionary advantage, invisibility, has become your weakness. How do you save something that most people don't know exists? I really wonder what will happen to this world after your extinction. Especially since you maintain the ecosystem balance by controlling the numbers of rodents and insects that destroy plants and spread diseases. What a shame! Really, 